the Laughing Monkey Music Show, Tewo and DJ Will. How are you? I'm good, man. How are you? I'm good. I'm glad. I'm glad we could talk. I feel like I've seen you. I almost feel like I know you, which super sounds super creepy. So I'm gonna <laughs> roll that back a tiny bit. <laughs> but being into but being into okay. rock and metal, you're you're you're. It's obviously it's a joke, but you're you're out there. Your presence. You're either interviewing. You're. I know you from 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 the knack, from the internet version. Uh, I'm not, I'm not in LA. But I know you do work at the Rainbow. I mean, you're you're really involved in metal. Uh, that metal show. Um, so I wanted to talk to you, saying kind of let people know a little bit more about you that don't know enough about you, and kind of get a little bit uh, a feel of who you are and what you're up to. Well, cool. Well, thanks for having me on your show. But let me give you let me give you a uh, an updated. Uh, Please, I'll I'll just I'll I'll let it I'll let what, what I'm doing. Okay. As far as the Rainbow is concerned, for those who don't know, uh, the Rainbow Bar and Grill, which is located on Sunset Strip in West Hollywood, California. I've been a DJ sound engineer there for the last uh, 12 years, going on almost 13 years. And while it's a restaurant first and foremost, there is a bar upstairs where bands do play. And also, I have an opportunity to DJ and mix um, rock and heavy metal and that's something I, I really really enjoy because it's an extension of what I've been doing pretty much the majority of my career uh, going back 35 plus years which will will, will tap into um, but as far as the rainbow is concerned that is one mainstay that has been consistent with my ability to continue uh, to do music in in a, in, a, in a live setting where I'm interacting, you know, with, with patrons and where we have special events or, you know, special release parties, what have you. Uh, it gives me an opportunity to sort of navigate and focus on what I call them the client because in essence, whatever the, the occasion calls for it, I'm able to make the match. It's not just about playing Guns N' Roses and Van Halen and Rat and Poison you know, every single weekend, but right. it's the ability to mix and match depending on who we have that particular day. Uh, so that's something that is been great. Um, and also with with K and C, the climate has changed there somewhat because the the website is now predominantly more of a um, review and uh, content site. The streaming, unfortunately, is no more, and that's been the case for a couple of years, which I really can't get into. But uh, as far as the its presence on online, it's still there, but more of a review from uh, live settings, press releases, interviews, things of that nature. What I've been doing for the last five years. Is I have a show on Total Rock Radio, which is based out of the UK, and I still do a show there on Sundays. So that's been at least uh, another opportunity to continue to do my show, The Vault, on another streaming format. And as far as the other aspect of spreading the heavy metal gospel, I also DJ on the Monsters of Rock Cruise, and I've been doing that for the last 10 years, and that's, that's been great. That, to me, is just it's a working vacation. And for those of you that aren't familiar with that, uh, the Monster Just Rock brand has been around for several, several years. But little around 20, let's see, I think around oh, 2000, 2010, 2011, around that time, uh, that brand had shifted its way onto cruise ships where we can have a lot of uh, performers um, you know, who don't play that often or who are uh, in the middle of a tour, just be on a ship and have a basically a floating festival. And I've been doing that for about 10 years. And that's, uh, that's, that's also a labor of love, too. But it's, uh, <laughs> it's great to be involved with all the bands um, the Monsters Rock from, from all over the world. I mean, every year it sells out. We have so many different loyal, loyal fans that really enjoy uh, 
It looks so awesome. I'm terrified of boats, but I'm almost at a point where I'm ready to get a ticket because it looks so awesome. It's been taking me a while. Like I, I was swore I was never going to be a boat guy, never going to go on a cruise. I'm like, I'm fine. I'm fine. But man, I keep looking at the lineup every year. I'm like, oh, this might be the year. You know, it just looks so incredible, you know, to just go out there and, and, and the artists that they select. You're right. I mean, sometimes they're like legacy acts that aren't always touring. Sometimes it's a special show for them because sometimes these bands aren't touring and it's special to see them because to them, it, they have other jobs. So it's a working vacation for them on some of them. I know. Oh, there's so, a question about it. And there's so many other different cruises that are branded. You know, there's the, the uh, you know, there's the Kid Rock cruise. There's, uh, you know, there's the Beach Boys cruise. But as far as the rock and heavy metal, there are so many different variations of it. You even did, um, there was a mega, uh, the mega cruise, which hopefully is not one and done. Uh, but, you know, it's like if you have a built-in fan base and if you have the right amount of fans, you yeah. don't get to see these bands. You can't fly to Europe. That's for the most part, where a lot of these festivals are year in and year out, that's where the cruises come in as an alternate. And literally every year, there's some variation of a rock cruise uh, taking place. But me primarily, um, I'm the of rock. Any any standout artists that you got to see on the boat that you you didn't get to see anywhere else, where you were like, yes, finally. Well, for starters, I'll take off the top of my head, we had quite a few acts from Sweden. It was almost the the West Coast or the West Hemisphere uh, <laughs> version of the Sweden Rock Fest. And we had the band Heat. Um, we have the, the Electric Boys or Electric nice. Boys. Um, um, uh, Nestor, band that, to my knowledge, have never uh, toured America. Uh, really, really good, solid Swedish, Swedish rock. Also, um, I'm trying to, there's, um, you know, sort of members of the Ingrid Malmsteen's band. Uh, oh, my goodness. Eclipse. Amazing oh, wow. group. An absolutely amazing group. I forgot I, I introduced them. So, th again, this is off the top of my head with no notes. No, notes, I know. I'm just kind of throwing it out Swedish there, at, you know, as, as like it sounds so exciting, yeah, cause, then, you know, like, if you're a fan of music, you, you, you're like, oh, my God. You know, you see different artists through the years, but there's still people that I haven't seen that would be fantastic, you know, because you always want to get that. Mm -hmm. and that cruise opens up so many doors for you that you don't normally go to go see. Yeah. Um, oh, another, another band that comes to mind. They couldn't join us because one of the members uh, fell ill. We hope to have them on this next upcoming cruise. A hardcore superstar. I mean, fantastic group. Uh, that are a fan favorite of the cruise. But yeah, I mean, for me, unless they're in some type of support um, support act tour in the States, I don't get to go to Europe as much as I'd like to. But if they come to town, uh, for me here on the West Coast, it's great. But again, just with a cruise, in a lot of cases, it's like Vandenberg, there's another one from, from the Netherlands. Oh, wow, really? Have not played America. Yeah, uh, it's I'd love to see primarily that. Adrian Vandenberg. Yeah, with with a lot of uh, with, with new members, but they they had two fantastic sets. And case in point, I cannot remember the last time they were in America. It's probably probably twenty plus years um, when they had uh, more of a presence, you know, on the rock radio and here in the states. But that's that's an example of. You know, seeing them elsewhere outside of, outside of where I live, and that's that's the great part uh, of the cruise. But all these bands are viable, whether they're whether they tour once in a while, or they're flying, or they reunite for just such occasions. Yeah, fantastic! It, it's just a great opportunity to see it because you know, it's a lot. I, I might have to do it. Like I just heard, like uh, uh, Rose Tattoo is going to be on one of those cruises. It's just like another band that you yes. just normally wouldn't get to see because, well, yes. let's face it, with COVID and then and Brexit, the economy for, for musicians is not getting political, but the finances now has made it so much harder for an artist to cross over the seas, you know, especially coming to a USA with taxes on top of it, and visas. Yeah. 
yeah, that, that's been hardcore. I mean, even though we're still feeling the after effects of the zombie apocalypse in 2020. Uh, there, yeah, I mean, there has been, yeah. Um, and then you know, the war in Ukraine, all of this all factors in. The fuel cost for, for touring, uh, that's also something that, that's uh, a big deal too. You know, yeah, yeah. Buses and, you know, it, 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 it's been difficult, but a lot of artists have been able to come out of it, reschedule the date, come through and make a go of it and just you know seeing the crowds you know seeing everyone's naked faces where we had so many we had a year plus of of disconnect it's yeah. been great to have that reconnect with live entertainment and then seeing bands that we, we care about so much and even during 2020 a lot of them did put out releases despite everything that was going on so it was good to see that the, the music was still out there, whether it's streaming, meeting the physical product, all of that is important to still connect uh, with it, your fans. With with fans. Despite well, the I challenges think that. What was interesting was I think a lot of artists put out some of their, because they've been touring forever, they got to stop and they put out some of their best albums ever. I think there's been so yeah. many good albums that have come out lately from these bands that have been playing forever that just haven't had a chance to recharge. I'm like, this is like, yeah. I, I talk to the artists in the show, I'm talking to them, I'm like, it's like your best album you've done in like your, compares to your first three or four albums. It's so solid. And it's a lot of artists. I mean, it's incredible. You know, it's been a great recharge, I think, for some of the musicians, you know. I, I think, yeah, I mean, I think with this year alone, again, just thinking about releases that, that, that have come out, just hundreds, just hundreds, like oh, yeah. Amon Amar, the, you know, uh, uh, faith in uh, uh, God, it's like destruction, creator, incredible releases, and yeah. you have you have all this material that they've been working on. I mean, there's been lineup changes, but nonetheless, you know, the music's getting out there, and it's been good. The, the with, with with it, they also some of them are like they've held back too. They're like, well, I don't want to put it out there, not tour for it. But then the problem is, a lot of them are like they release it. They're already working on a new album now, so it's like they're they're touring. To them, it's like an old album that's three years old that wasn't out because it's new for fans. But they have new music they want to do, so they have this like weird double album thing going on now. The ones that were holding on to them. Yeah, no, well, we have a lot of uh, material that's backed up. It's like that, that'll happen, but nonetheless, it's, uh, it's it's just good to see the productivity hasn't stopped, even though the world stopped years ago right there was no wrong way to do it i don't think I, i've always said like if a band held on to it or they didn't hold on to it or if they're doing what's the new term now is what is it the waterfall the, do like a waterfall and they do like one a release every month or something where it kind of singles out and at the end they'll have enough for an album and then they may put out a product afterwards i think that's one of the things that mars are doing now there's so many different avenues that they're, they're trying it's it's almost like it's a, it's a whole new world um this show started because of COVID and artists and telling people the artists were coming on. And I'm like, if they have a streaming event, if they, you know, go to their merch, go to the site and kind of break down that the cost of touring is so expensive, you know, buy the shirts if you can, because if you go to the venue, the venue's going to tax them for the shirts. They have to take it behind them in a cart, pull the gas, just pull the shirts, have the right sizes, pre-order them. So, I mean, like if the artists come to your town, support them, buy the shirts, buy the merch. Don't say they're going to come back next time because we've learned it might not happen again, you know. Touring is where, you know, that's where you make your, your biggest net. Uh, you cannot rely on radio airplay. Radio airplay, that business model is not the same as it was 15, 20 years ago where you're relying on the single. Even though they're still released currently, it's just bottom line when it comes to touring, mm -hmm. you know, some bands do well, you know, with their guarantees, but for the most part, it's merchandise, merchandise, merchandise. Yep. And, uh, Radio is scrambling right now, too. I've seen them, like, I've, I've actually had news from this show end up on radio sites. They'll grab stuff from me. I mean, so they're grabbing, from, I think they're in a spot where they're trying to find out what they're going to do, because um, example would be Buck Cherry's last album. Uh, they didn't do radio. They broke it with all all interview shows, podcasts, streaming. You know stuff like that like a grassroots and the album you know broke through 
once again, they didn't need radio, you know, which is pretty crazy if you think about it back in the day. <laughs> well, we're so, with social media comes in, we'll always be a tool. So something bigger and better comes along because <laughs> word of mouth gets uh, butts in the seat uh, for the most part. We're not an e-flyer. You know, if you're not hearing it on the radio or TV, social media. Social media is still viable, even though it's, it continues to be the wild, wild west in a lot of instances, but uh, getting the, the word out there, that, that's huge. It's like what I was laughing about, your Instagram or like if, in my Instagram, I'll have like, I, I put up a mine as be the artists that I'm on my show that, you know, I promote that way. You've got your work on there. I, I notice a lot of musicians are promoting on there. There's a lot of younger musicians, and it's funny because some of them will have a lot of a lot of followers, but they've never played a club. They probably couldn't fill a club. Whereas we'll have artists from you know back in the day, and they'll have you know a thousand people follow them or something really small, and they've got platinum albums. The the the, uh, <laughs> the scales are so weird right now with like what's actually going to put put people in a club, or what's going to be people on their phone watching it, and how does it um, become commercial enough for somebody to make money out of it? You know what I mean? That's gonna be interesting to see how that kind of plays out. Like real musicians, you know, fill the seats. Yeah. We've got bands now that have been playing, and so they can still—they don't need a social media as much. But what happens when a lot of these artists start to go away, and the generation we have now are the ones that are just on social media? My concern is, I hope they start playing clubs. <laughs> you know, better do something. Um, because you, know, you can put it, videos up on YouTube all day and put content on a website, but for the most part, it's really about how aggressive you are with, uh, the, you know, your social media footprint, uh, yeah. you know, the Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, because uh, there are instances where, and going back to 2020 for a quick second, there are instances where, um, I think, you know, Candlemass, Voivod, uh, I think Sake is Right, um, Danko Jones, again, this is off the top of my head. These, some, uh, and there's many other artists that did this. Uh, Kick At, uh, they all, all, Coney Hatch, they all had live streaming concerts mm -hmm. when they couldn't uh, perform live in concert or they couldn't perform live in venues. So that was a whole thing to sort of let's, let's adjust to the paradigm shift that we're dealing with here. How can we still? potentially make money how can we still get ourselves out there and that was a big thing streaming content uh that was you know where if you, if you like what you hear or if you want to see the, these artists play one of their favorite your favorite albums in their entirety you know so throw down a few dollars and that that went well for quite a while because yeah no one's going to clubs no one's going to arenas no one's going to stadiums in such that period so that was something that I found was a great avenue to be like, hey, you want to support the band? You can still buy merch. You can still do that in the website. But yeah. here's an opportunity for them actually playing, you know, in their rehearsal hall or studio that they're going to play a performance. You want to, you want to pay for it? You can do that. And that went on for quite some time. That was a way to sort of circumvent not being physically inside a physical building. Of you know where fans could see them yeah. in person, and there's no way around it. Right. Yeah. I don't think it would stop anybody from seeing them live though either. That was the thing though. I know that was a fear if people would say, "Well, if I you see you live, then I'm a fan. I, I'll watch them live. I still want to see them live." It's the, the, the watching them streaming is kind of like listening to an album. If you're a rock fan, you want to be there, and nothing can replace that. You know. Of course. So to me, to, streaming was know. great because I don't think it would have affected the musicians. I would hope the fans would still go to both. You know what I mean? I said they should make as much money as possible. They're musicians. No one's walking out for them, you know? Stream, sell, whatever you can right. do. You know, get a good commercial for your songs. Do whatever you got to do, man, to survive. We, you, you've might. been in the, in, the, in the scene, especially over in LA scene. Like, how, how has the scene changed, though, over the years? Like, before COVID and after COVID, how is the live music scene there? Has it died off? Is it getting bigger again? Like, what's going on there? I mean, are you talking in terms of what I've seen? Yeah, what you've seen. Yeah, yeah, what you've seen the change as it goes on. Yeah, 
Well, for starters, there's there's more bands than there are venues for them to play at. So okay. that becomes a challenge when you have, you know, C, you know, B, C level tiered acts that are all vying for the same entertainment dollars. But yeah. you can't draw, if you, if you don't have a draw, it's very difficult to get things going. You really just have to get out there and tour. I just noticed that a lot of the legacy acts that are still out there, still doing their thing. Again, the fan base, it, it's loyal. Uh, it continues to support them when they come to town. Any of the yeah. up and coming bands have a little bit of a rough go at it. You know, unless they package something together to just get out there, you know, in an RV or a little trailer hitch and just get out there, you, you got to get on that hustle. You just have to because. I'm not, and I don't know how much electronic press kits do much anymore. It's really about name recognition and brand recognition. That's yeah. where a lot of the talent, uh, uh, the uh, the talent buyers and the club bookers kind of base, you know, what bids and offers they're going to put out there. I mean, of course, someone will poke holes in what I'm saying that work more intently in that field, I'm just looking at it in terms of, I see a lot of uh, younger bands on these bills and several bands. We could just do flyers, there's just so many flyers, people couldn't see them all. It just feels like that we digitally now, I'm sure you probably get a million bands, a million emails a day, or people reaching out to you with so much new music for you, and it's just so much that everybody wants you to consume. I can't, I just, my mailbox is full every day with just, people just asking me, and I'm like, there's just too much. Press kits, I can't look at everything, there's just Dang so much yeah. time. You know, and right. it's not about the talent at all. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm like, sorry, Matt. I just can't look at everything. You know, let's build me a bigger day. Hey, I Matt, do it. I, you're preaching to the choir. I went to this uh, during my, my stint at Metal Blade Records back in the day, and then my stint at Capitol Records. Uh, they were just, and at that time, you know, it wasn't digital files, it was physical content. And physical content. In the form of a good old cassette, and I get <laughs> boxes of them, packages, Ugh. you know, to the point where I'd have an assistant asking me filters through all of that, and I'd find some gems. And a lot of times there were some, uh, uh, some, some rough, really rough demos out there. But that's Ugh. the beauty of it back then. The bands trying to get their attention to all the record companies where they were all, you know, had all big shiny buildings, but now all of that. That's all subsided uh, in terms of uh, getting the attention of, of labels. But yeah, that was how you, how you did it. You know, the, the DIY ethic. Slap a logo on a old Maxell TDK tape, put on your best three or four songs, and hope for the best that something in there shines. So yeah, I, I went through a lot of that uh, with Metal Blade and, and Capital. And then technically, I still. Uh, you can say your inbox is full. I what changed for me is my inbox it is just full of the press releases of all the upcoming releases and all the upcoming newer bands. And right. unless I, you know, have the time to go through each and every one, which I don't, I get to it when I can because it's uh, you know, I'm working kind of a, in a different flow these days. Um, I mean, there's some good stuff out there, but for the most part, it's, there's still a humongous amount of artists that are just trying to get your attention and hope that uh, you know something will will take off. And it's, you know, it's it's tough if you don't have the right all the right pieces, you know, from the management to being able to tour and you know other finding other players that are serious about the craft. Uh, writing songs, your musicianship, all of that factors in and how long you're, you're going to stick around and how serious uh, you are about being in the band and realizing you're up against thousands out there worldwide. So the talent's out there. It's just a matter of uh, the, the avenues for them to do their thing beyond social media. So see what you got live. But if aren't the venues, you know, venues that have been you know, turn into parking lots or soon-to-be hotels 
it's tough. It's tough. I don't know how people are going to do it. I mean, besides, like, there's no more. It's, it's, there are less of, like, when you go see the stadium tour, there's less of, you know, classic acts or, or Dirty Honey. Like, 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 spots for new bands to kind of sneak on for that next tier. Like, there's not a lot of diving boards for that, like, that last tier to go big. It's like, dude, there's a lot of middle space for artists nowadays. But I don't know. I don't even know how they break big anymore. Like, how they can get that next step level big, you know? I guess just the cult following is so big you know what i mean it just you just keep growing I, I don't even know anymore you know um and with the amount of press i get a ton of press releases and i get a ton of other artists that reach out to me that are doing their own work and they want to come on and promote it you know and i'm like so i can't do everyone because it's not an audience or an unknown person to talk about work that they're not that nobody's listening to it's not that your work isn't good it's just nobody's heard it so talking about something that nobody's heard is really hard <laughs> you know so, you know, it, yeah. it puts you in a hard spot like that. Yeah. And I imagine, I always see some things that you, that you get a little out of it. Quite a bit. Quite a bit. It's, uh, <laughs> I, I've, I've had discussions with people about, you know, w- w- I mean, w- whatever the year is, whether it's you know, two or three years ago, we'd, we'd have the discussion at that particular time. And we'd say, the discussion would, would come back to, Okay, the the legacy acts, the, the acts that are touring stadiums now currently, what are the, what are those stadium acts going to be 10, 15 years from now? Who exactly can do the draw of 50, 60,000 by themselves? Because eventually, all the bands that we know, non-rock and otherwise, all the acts that we know eventually are going to retire, are going to shut it down. And then what becomes of those acts that can pull in big crowds? And it's a, it's a short list. You couldn't come up with much that who are still going to be pumping it out, pulling in big numbers like that. You know, I mean, yeah. whether it's pop, country, rock metal, cases, it's like at some point, all that's going to go away. Who are going to be those next stars? And if I just, redirect this back to rock and metal that is a very difficult question because obviously it is. It's at the very top of you know with the you know metallica okay we all know about metallica but beyond that who no you're right i mean look at i mean pa- pantera doing with metallica right now is huge because that was a big hole left behind these are all bands that were huge before can still come back out and be big again you know or the, the celebration of Pantera, so I don't offend anybody, which still is awesome to me, by the way. <laughs> um, no, the, the, hey, the, the pairing's great. A lot of people looking forward to it. And, okay. you know, obviously, Metallica have already announced you know, the next two years of with, you know, the opening acts, and you know, that's going to be great. I'm just looking at it in a, in a optic situation right. where, you know, Stadiums are built, uh, most of them, you know, for sporting events, but when it comes to live entertainment, you know, eventually, no more Rolling Stones, no No. more, you know, YouTube and Bon Jovi and all that ACDC and Def Leppard, Foo Fighters, you know, it's like, you know, all that, all of it eventually is going to go away. Who takes that mantle beyond all those acts? It'll be very interesting to see because. I couldn't pinpoint specifically who. Saying that now in 2022, couldn't tell you. That's it's very interesting. See how that it's all hard. pans out. Because you could have though, yeah. like back in the day, yeah. there was a point you could say, "Oh, these are the bands that are that are pointed towards this next level. They're going to take over the Aerosmiths and this and that." Or yeah, there was a time when yeah, the Bon Jovi's were going to ACDCs, but the ACDCs never moved. Which is a certain point where everyone kind of got to the front of the line now. And there's no one in the back of the line, you know. I don't, I don't see anybody either, and that's my whole thing. I'm like, I don't know what's going to happen to music after a certain point, you know. I'm hopeful, but uh, we'll well, see. of course, I'm hopeful. But if you adjust, and if you adjust to not do, and if they don't do wide scale worldwide touring, you know, from stadium to stadium to stadium, that's why the res- the residency model works so well, uh, mm. where the that fan base can travel to one destination and catch the artist time and time again. 
it's less wear and tear on the tour production where it's just one location. So that works. Obviously, that continues to work in Vegas. There's, there's quite a few artists, you know, Fifth Aerosmith, as you mentioned, um, it's on and on. So it's that's something, but I'm thinking about all the people that work behind the scenes with all these other venues from, you know, from the, to the small clubs to the mid sized venues to the all the way up into the arena. But and you know what you're saying. Place to keep the lights on. You know, you you work. You, <laughs> yeah, you are you're a yeah. frontline person when it comes to the music industry because you've worked in radio. That's changed. Um, you know, I used to work in studios and do some. I used to work do some uh, intern for uh, in effect in Relativity Records, Combat, back in the '90s. Oh, nice, that. And, uh, it opened. I just sound like an old man, but I'm like I'm concerned because it, it was a fun time. That excitement of music of finding it and. And all these different artists and different uh, i love all different all different rock genres but you know it's it's so different now you know and but you oh, like i said you you were radio and you're working in the clubs what happens to you the radio becomes you know changes the content changes radio always changes the format or um sure. you know the clubs got closed down for COVID, so you can't go there that's like different jobs are just like moving around for you you know it's, it's a shuffle <laughs> yeah i give you props sure. for for keeping your head above water and keeping out there still, you know, it says a lot. Well, it's about, it's about the hustle. It's about how do you, you know, diversify, you know, it's like putting it in financial terms. It's like how to diversify your portfolio. <laughs> because when you, I mean, I'll, and I'll speak for myself, you know, 2020, when it was the rainbow, I mean, at the time, my job was deemed non-essential yeah. and and that goes for everyone who was a ticket taker security at a venue lighting front of house sound tech tour bus operators booking agents all of that all of that that was that was very very telling and that was very sobering uh, to be told that you are not essential and after 18 months, it's like, okay, well, I have to do, I have to do something else. I have to figure something else out because until we can go back, until we have all the, I mean, until we have all the facts about what's going on and in this, in this climate, uh, yep. I've got to figure out something else. Yeah. Being versatile, being, um, you know, that's the word I'm looking for. <laughs> Malleable, um, I think. I think like, you, you that was, yeah. So that was something I had to sort of lean on until further notice. But it was, um, yeah, like life changing for, for a lot of people. But not to belabor the fact, I and mean, not really, even though it's a few years past, it's like people still aren't out of it. There's still uh, situations that uh, will never go away. That uh, 2020 gave us, but um, the one aspect of the business and dealing with it, it's, uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was an eye opener. I was, I was and prepare that. everybody for, for the future now so everybody knows to be a little, a little more flexible. Something happens again, you know, be a little more ready for it. I'm happy to see you, you've been able to survive and do better than just survive, you know, you keep excelling in it, you know. And I, I, you know, I want to thank you for your time today. Um, but I want to encourage people to check out your radio. You know, you're all over the place. You know, you got, you got mad props. You got a lot of, you got a lot of respect. You know, you, you, uh, your shows and, and everything is just great. Uh, check you out the rainbow. Check out your stuff. Any of the links you send me, I'm gonna put underneath the show. If everybody watches, knows, or listens, go. Uh, DJ Will will set up all his links there. Go to go to the links. Support them check them out you know anything you want to add hey man it's just, as i uh, as i say with uh the closing of my show uh, to everyone who enjoys music music just in general i like to say keep it keep it heavy and keep it metal and if you're passionate about any form of music obviously i'm biased towards the rock and heavy metal the important <laughs> thing is that you listen and appreciate that the, the music is out there just find it 
when you think it's not out there, it's out there. Always out Beautiful. there. There's a lot of it. Check my inbox. There's tons of music. Thank you, man. I appreciate you coming on. Thank you. Appreciate it, man. Thank you for having me.